everybody, it's Tyler here at the Minnesota Signature event at Mall of America, checking in with 8110W Whisper. If you checked out the reveal video, you gotta be impressed. This robot here, absolutely phenomenal to be going through. Love the aestheticness of this robot. Great looking machine that you all built here, but very functional as well too. So let's take a look at Whisper as we go through. We'll be talking about their ring journey all the way through. A lot of great features I want you to focus on as they approach the high stakes game. And of course, we'll be talking about how they approach the uh, handling the goals for it, some of the odometry they're doing, autonomous moves, some of the strategy behind it. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Jack, let's really break down this robot and what's gone into it. Talk, talk me more about your uh, drivetrain choice, especially early on in high stakes. I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how the meta evolves in this game. And then we go into your mobile goal, goal clamp also. Yep. Yeah, so I want to start out with the drivetrain. Um, so we decided to do uh, six motor drive on this bot with um, 2.75 inch Omni wheels on a three to four gear ratio, 450 RPM. So we decided that this would work best um, for a couple different reasons. Um, we just thought that running with torque as well as speed would be the most optimal way to approach uh, this year's game. So a couple of features that our drivetrain has um, is you'll notice that there are these um, sprockets with chain on them on the front of the robot. So these are our gliders. And so if we are, if Logan is driving around um, and he runs into a wall or the ladder in the middle of the field or something like that, um, it will just kind of deflect us off of that and it'll allow us to keep driving um, just super easily. What made you choose to want to go there? You know, we think about last year, we interviewed a lot of teams and they were running just like, you know, a plastic piece or something like that. What, what made you actually want to put like chain on a sprocket uh, to make that? Why did that work out best for you? Um, it was just a simple way to uh, solve this little problem. And it, we just found that it was the smoothest way to um, like, kind of keep the flow. Sure. And it's not going. powered or anything though, right? No, no. All right, that'd be like, I don't know what kind of strat that'd be, but that'd be crazy. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, so uh, the next bit is the uh, mobile goal clamp. So what we decided to do here is we used a two piston clamp um, to push this down. And then we used uh, rubber stoppers and standoffs to lock in the mobile goal as tightly as we can. Um, and then we also added uh, spacers here, kind of as uh, like funnels or guides, so that if we come in off center, the mobile goal will get funneled into the back clamp um, as smoothly as it possibly can. Well, let's move into your uh, intake, and Logan's been talking more about that. I'd uh, love to hear more about it. And if we can see a couple of the game pieces come through, I'd love to see what that journey looks like. And just break down, like, why'd you choose to go the, this conveyor type route, and maybe how it maybe differs from some of the other teams you've seen. Yeah, so for the intake, we decided to do a split intake, split by two five and a half watts. Uh, basically, the reason we did a split intake was so that we can control uh, both the second stage and the first stage uh, independently uh, for autons. And uh, basically, going into the first stage, we have uh, this middle flex wheel here that we put spacers into every other hole. And that's basically to create sort of a triangle shape uh, within the flex wheel to kind of hook onto the ring a lot easier. And then um, as we go up into the intake, um, we have these uh, rubber links here that basically stop the ring um, so that uh, when our second stage with the hooks goes around, we basically always pick it up in the middle because uh, if we pick it up at the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the ring, uh, it'll just fly past the goal and we want it to get in the middle of the ring so that we can uh, spin it on a lot easier. And then also on our uh, second stage, we have a small sprocket right here. Basically, we did this so that we can uh, change the orientation of our hook a lot quicker so that the ring can flip onto the, the goal a lot uh, faster. And then we have this tensioner here, basically right under our uh, sprocket here to basically uh, go straight down on the ring so that basically uh, every time uh, we flip a ring on there, it'll go straight down and then it basically makes it uh, uh, score it easier. Can we see a ring powered through all the way? Yeah. It's 
So we're filming this before even your first match takes place. So we know with all teams, uh, you're going to keep iterating and looking at what other processes you go through. So I can't wait to see this continual uh, process hap uh, continue to happen in here. Let's talk about the trap door on it. You know, I. I was interested to hear on this because last year we heard so many teams using trap doors, right, uh, for over under. I wasn't sure we'd see that here in high six as well. So I'd love to hear a little bit more uh, why you decided to go that route. How's it working out for you, Sam? Yeah, so actually you may have noticed um, we have this very interesting little trap door mechanism here on our intake. So as the ring goes through, if would you want to have to it? So as the ring goes through, it goes under this because it's on a hinge and it as the ring goes over, we can passively bring it up and then we can bring the intake back and it'll slide back into our hopper. And actually something that we've been working on is we actually have this uh, distance sensor right here so that when it, it can sense a ring and then the intake will automatically reverse straight into our hopper. You know, that, that's really cool. Now we're gonna be talking about the hopper in just a moment. Um, when you're looking from a mass strategy uh, standpoint on this, I'm assuming you're mostly using straight conveyor when you're holding a mobile goal and then the hoppers for any of the side goals sort of thing. Yeah. So really cool in that. Uh, let's talk more about that hopper here, pass over to Jackson and speak more about how this process works. Uh, I'm so glad to see teams using hoppers because we have seen some teams just only use conveyor and I think they're kind of missing the mark a little bit on that. So talk to me more about your design for your hopper mechanism. Yeah, so the hopper I'd say is definitely one of our best parts on our robot. Um, how it works is again, the, or the trap door will just load and this is capable of holding up to two rings at a time. And so what we do then is just raise this up or yeah. And this will allow us to just line up with the wall stakes and then just uh, lower it. And you'll see here on the front of this, uh, um, on the hopper here, we have these um, little uh, hinged gates here. And what this does is that um, they're banded so that way when the robot is just moving around and it isn't uh, pulling on anything, um, the uh, uh, rings here will be completely secure against the hopper and they're not going to fall out anywhere but as soon as you put them onto a wall stake and pull away the tension will just allow that to pull through um, the bottom of the hopper here is actually open on the front and so what this does is this um, stops it from um, catching on the mobile goal or the wall stakes sorry and so we can just pull away from the wall stake and continue moving with the robot um, you also see here we have some flaps on the top and that's just to keep um, rings from falling out once they're um, uh, sliding off the trap door, which was something that could happen, you know? And so um, lastly, um, there's this, um, you'll see that the hopper is actually um, on a hinge itself. So that way it can rotate freely, uh, separately from the lift, which is something that we um, think is very unique to us. So when the hopper is um, elevated, we use this string here to um, pull down the front and keep it from wobbling up and down, which stops rings from, like makes it hard to score. But as soon as um, the lift is lowered, you'll see that it allows it to just flip back to normal position and rest on the top of the front stage of our intake. And you all went through a lot of iterations for this as well too. So Pritt, talk to me, talk to me more about what those iterations look like. And I know we mentioned a couple sensors in the robot, but anything else you want to cover on that too? So, the, so, 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 uh, so then initially to start our plan, what uh, was, uh, was to intake straight into the hopper, but the issue is the hooks would, would just get caught on the ring and 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 then the second ring wouldn't be a a l able to to go onto it and we really 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 wanted a hopper with two rings so then we tried this design out and it seemed to work pretty, pretty well and then uh, even with this design we've gone, gone gone through four different iterations mainly with the trap door mech uh we used to have it just uh, uh on on a straight piece well piece of plastic without a hinge and they are the bendiness of the plastic would 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 will uh, would act as the trapdoor but the issue is that is it was not reliable because it would flex in different ways at different times and 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 it was pip and it was pip pip pretty weak and pretty untunable so then ba ba because of that we do well we changed still to do this hinge and it's been working a lot better uh and then in terms of sensors we have an initial sensor tucked way in here in the mobile goal clamp uh, that's just because it's the only place it would fit and still be stationary. And then on the bottom of the robot, 
We have this uh, tracking wheel, which is a two inch tracking wheel on a rotation sensor. This, it, uh, it's, ju ju it's just for lateral uh, sideways move movement for the ro 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 robot to use in, in, uh, in, in our uh, odometry. And then lastly, we have the uh, distance sensor for the ring sensing. And then in terms of autonomous strategy and logan yeah, so for strategy, uh, basically after Auton, we want to try and get to the positive as quickly as possible because if we're bas basically able to stay in there with a full goal, uh, we can uh, basically stay there the whole match and secure ourselves technically uh, two goals worth of points. And in Auton, we, we try and score as many rings as possible and then actually set ourselves up so that we can go straight to straight to the uh, the positive corner. And then um, another thing uh, with strategy during the match is um, we always try, if we have a full goal, we always try to keep uh, one uh, ring in our hopper so that if at any point um, we don't have the top ring on one of the uh, stationary uh, wall stakes, uh, we can easily just uh, go and put that on and then we secure uh, three points there. And then another thing we have for um, um, getting, on, uh, getting rings onto the stationaries that a lot of other teams don't is we actually have a lineup mech right 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 here uh, basically it's a gap between uh, our intake and we have a, a piece of flight tool right there as uh, sort of a soft cushion and basically we can uh, drive into the uh, wall stake and with our lift up and it'll basically line us up uh, perfectly so that all we have to do is uh, bring our lift down and it's a lot different from other teams because they have to uh, try and line up without any lineup mechanics. This basically saves us, saves us a lot of time and we can do more in the match. Yeah, anything you do to get that extra cycle to your right is what's going to make the difference for that. So we can't wait to see how that plays out. This is Whisper once again. Uh, really excited to see how it works out for you here at the Minnesota Signature event, of course, throughout the entire season with your awesome robot Casper. So good luck here and can't wait to see how you do the rest of the way. Thanks for telling us more about your robot this year. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.